Hello students, my name is Ishan Mutgal and today we are going to discuss a question from the topic transient and the chapter is prime domain analysis. Transient is one of the most important topic from your, for your gate exam and also for your practical life. You can see transient everywhere, anywhere in your household, in your, in your uh, schools, in your colleges or hospitals or anywhere. Okay? Transient is also important for your subject power system. But here we see for network theory. And today that the question we are, solve, we are discussing, this question can be solved using a logical way if your concepts are good or we can solve it in a conventional way. So first of all we will solve it through option elimination method and then we will solve it through conventional method. Okay, and the question is, you can see on the board, in the following figure, capacitor C1 and C2 are ideal and C1 has been charged to 12 volt before the ideal switch S is closed at T equal to 0. The current IT for all T is, option A, 0, option B, a step function, option C, an exponentially decaying function and option D, impulse function. Okay. In this question, we have given that C1 is initially charged to 12 volt and C2 is 0 volt. Now, see this question carefully. What is, what is the resistance in this question? Correct. Resistance is 0. So, if resistance is 0, time constant will be? It will be negligible. Now, for negligible time constant, always I mean one thing that the two most important equation of the transient which are Vc0 plus equal to Vc0 minus and Il0 plus is equal to Il0 minus. If time constant is negligible or zero then these two formulas which is the most important equation for transient will not applicable. Okay. We cannot apply this formula into this question because the resistance is zero. This is the most important point. Okay. Now we will do it by option elimination method. Now see, as soon as capacitor, as soon as switch will be closed, capacitor C1 will start to discharge and capacitor C2 will start to charge. Okay. Now resistance is zero. It means it reach its steady state in no time which means capacitor C1 and C2 will reach some particular voltage V because they are parallel, it reach particular voltage V and at that voltage, the potential difference of whole network will be zero. So, no current will be flow after some time. But for charging or discharging, some current will be flow, which means option A, which is zero, is wrong. Okay. Now, for exponentially decaying current, there must be some resistance present. Okay. But the resistance of network is zero. It means current cannot be exponentially decayed. Which means option C is also wrong. Now we have remained two options. A step function and an impulse function. Now see what is a step function. Now see. This is your step function. It means there is some current till t equal to infinity. But as we have discussed, what will happen after a time, capacitor C1 and C2 will reach to a particular voltage and the potential difference of whole network will be zero. And therefore, the current will be zero. But here the current is not zero, which means step function is not the answer. Now, see why impulse is the answer. See, as soon as the switch is closed, C1 will start to discharge, C2 will start to charge and this happens in no time, which means for an instant, in an instant capacitor C1 reach to a particular voltage and in the same instant capacitor C2 will reach to that particular voltage, which means for an instant the current is flowing. And we know for the instant current, the current is impulse. That's why the option D is correct. The IT which flowing through this network will be an impulse function. Okay. This was the option elimination method. 
but there is also a conventional way to solve it. So, now we will see the conventional method to solve it. As we have discussed in classrooms that for a second order network, we have to convert our network into a Laplace transformation and then find the current to in Laplace form and by taking inverse Laplace, we can find the current in a time domain. So, uh, remember carefully, capacitor in Laplace form will be converted into a 1 upon C1s like this. 1 upon C1s in series with a voltage source. In series with a voltage source having initial voltage 12 volt which means 12 by S. Similarly, capacitor C2 will change into this and because the initial voltage across capacitor is 0 which means short circuit. It will be 1 upon C2s and we have to find the current I is like this. Okay, now see, can we apply KVL here? Yes, we can apply the KVL. So, by applying KVL, you can see that minus 12 by S plus I S upon S C1 plus I S upon S C2 equal to 0. This is by using the KVL, right? Now, now we have to find that current I is from this KVL equation. By rearranging it, you can see I is is how much? 12 upon 1 by C1 plus 1 by C2. Yes or no? It will be 12 C1 C2 upon C1 plus C2, which is the I is. Now see, Laplace transform is in a constant function and you have to remember that for a impulse function, what is a Laplace? It is 1. We know for the Laplace of del T is how much? Equal to 1. Okay. And Laplace of constant multiplied by impulse is that constant. Sorry is that constant A. Okay? Now, what will happen? We have to take inverse Laplace of this. So, ID will be Laplace inverse of IS. It will be constant multiply impulse del T, which is again a impulse function. Yes? So, this is the answer. So, option D is the answer that current will be the impulse function. Okay. So, this was the gate question. But, now we will see how can we modify this question. I told you that the two most important equation will not follow in this question. Now, see. In the question, we have given that two capacitors are in parallel like this. C1 and C2 and it is initially charged with some voltage V. Okay, which means Vc1 0 minus is V volt. Okay, and Vc2 0 minus is 0 volt. Now, if they ask that what will be the voltage across this combination at t equal to 0 plus. So, first thing we have to remember at t equal to 0 plus, the equation of Vc 0 plus equal to Vc 0 minus will not follow because the resistance is 0. Now see, at t equal to 0 plus, what will happen? This law, which is the conservation of charge, is always applicable for every system. Conservation of charge and conservation of energy, these two are the universal law. Q0 minus is the charge at 0 minus. So, at 0 minus, only capacitor C1 was charged. Okay? So, we can write C1 capacitor voltage at 0 minus equal to at Q0 plus, both the capacitor C1 and C2 are charged and at a particular voltage and that voltage is same. 
which means VC1 0 plus C1 plus VC2 0 plus C2. Yes or no? Now we know VC1 0 plus is equal to VC2 0 plus and some voltage and C. What will happen? After rearranging the equation, you will get C1 VC1 0 minus upon C1 plus C2. Yes or no? So this will be the voltage across this combination. So one form is to find the voltage. Second form, you can also draw the voltage waveform across both capacitors. So, for capacitor C1. See, for capacitor C1, it has been initially charged to some voltage V. So, before T, it is charged to voltage V. And, Vc0 plus is not equal to this. So, in, so in a same instant, in a particular instant, it will drop down to its final value and after they will charge to this voltage and there is no resistance present this voltage will remain in a network till t tends to infinity it can the same voltage will be at t equal to 1 t equal to 2 4 5 or at any time instant till t tends to infinity like this and this voltage is this voltage there is a pause Vinish. Vinish. So this is a waveform of capacitor voltage C1. You can also draw the waveform of capacitor voltage C2. You can also draw the waveform of for this voltage C. Before T equal to 0, it has 0 volt and it will charge to same particular voltage V dash and it will remain to this voltage till t tends to infinity. So you can see, you can draw waveform of this voltage also. So from the same question, we have developed the three more equations. And always remember this formula. This is a one, this is the most important formula. Okay? And for any time t, for any time instant, the formula will be same if the resistance is zero. If resistance is not zero, then this formula can only applicable for t tends to infinity. Okay? So, this formula applicable for all time instant. Instant if resistance is equal to zero and if there is some resistance present then only for t tends to infinity okay thank you keep watching and subscribe our channel